Jaradha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Gopi Janna Valla Bhagiri Varadari Gopi Janna Valla Bhagiri Varadari Yashoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachade Yamuna Tira Vanachade Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This morning we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, entitled um, Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 28. Pranjana becomes a woman in the next life. Text 13. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Yavano Paruda. What is it? Hmm. Yeah, the, the mirror, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yavano Paruda Yetano. Kastayam Kalakanyaya Puryam Prajvara Samsishta Pura Palon Vatopyata Yavano Parudayat Yatano Kastayam Kalakanyaya Puryam Prajvara Sangshishta Pula Palon Vatapyata Yavano Parudayatano Vistayam Kalakanya Yam 
Kuryam Prajvara Samshishta Buddha Palun Vata Yata like to chant? Okay. Okay, word by word. Yavana. Yavana. By the Yavanas. Yavana. Uparuda. Attacked. Ayatanaha. His abode. Ristayam. When seized. Kalakanya. By the daughter of time. Puryam. The city. Prajvara Samshish. Shishtaha, being approached by Prajvara, Purapalaha, the city superintendent, Anvatapyata, became also very much aggrieved. Translation. The city superintendent of police, the serpent, saw that the citizens were being attacked by Kalakanya, and he became very aggrieved to see his own residence set ablaze after being attacked by the Yavanas. Report. The living entity is covered by two different types of bodies, the gross body and the subtle body. At death, we can see that the gross body is finished, but actually the living entity is carried by the subtle body to another gross body. The so-called scientists of the modern age cannot see how the subtle body is working in carrying the soul from one body to another. This subtle body has been figuratively described as a serpent or the city's police superintendent. When there is fire everywhere, the police superintendent cannot escape either. When there is security and an absence of fire in the city, the police superintendent can impose his authority upon the citizens. But when there is an all-out attack on the city, he is rendered useless. As the life air was ready to leave the gross body, the subtle body also began to experience pain.
translation again. The city superintendent of police, the serpent, saw that the citizens were being attacked by Kalakanya, and he became very aggrieved to see his own residence set ablaze after being attacked by the Yavanas. <clears throat> So we could say like the fire is, you know, getting closer um, to destroying everything. Um, like w when when the fire is uh, when there's break breakouts of fire, there's a there's a chance of sometimes people that can escape. <coughs> I think some time ago we talked about this. I don't know what the <laughs> case was, but we we were discussing this in Bhagavad Gita sometime about fires, but. Uh, so there's, you could say, like a chance of escape. There's a chance of recovery, right? But at one particular point, <laughs> there's no chance of escape and there's no chance of recovery. I mean, it's too late. If it's too late, it's too late. Uh, so similarly here, uh, it's describing Paranjana. He's this, uh, this personality he is getting closer to the time of death. So maybe before this time, there was some chance or some hope of escape or a recovery. Like, okay, I'm going to get better. Like sometimes you visit people in the hospital and they're suffering some disease. And whether they think out of delusion that they'll get better or whether... They're, the doctors say there's some hope of them getting better. Whatever the case is, sometimes there's a hope like that. Okay, I'll get better. Um, but again, there's cases where, yeah, just you're not getting better, getting worse, getting closer. Um, just like I have my god brother, I mean my god sister, um, L Lalita. She's in, she's in, uh, where is it? Yeah, she's in Columbus. So, and her her husband Prem Vilas. <coughs> so, what she does is, she cares for the um, for people who yeah about to die like hospice care. And what Prem Vilas does is he tells people that um, you know your end of life is near. In other words, you're terminal. You're not you're not going to recover. So he, ha huh? Yeah, he's a doctor. Yeah, they're both doctors. So I was talking to him one time about this, and it's a, I mean, he was explaining it's a difficult job. <laughs> it's a really difficult job. And he has to tell people all the time, uh, yeah, term, your disease is terminal, I'm sorry. And, and he has to deal with the family members. And sometimes the family members get really angry. They yell at him, and, and uh, sometimes, at, at least verbally attack. I don't know if he ever got a physical attack, but they get really, really upset. So, um, he, he, and he said he, he, he uses this, world, this word to continue trying to live under your particular condition. He says it's futile. He uses this word a lot, futile, futile. And then, which is interesting because they're a couple, <laughs> it's like he tells them that and then she you know, takes care of it. I don't know if it exactly works like that, but, you know. So here we see that this is happening to... Um, Prunjan is getting closer. And therefore, okay, his body is experiencing the pain and the anguish and the, yeah. And then we see that the subtle mind is also starting to experience that pain, starting to understand that uh, getting closer. <coughs> so, and as Prabhupada explains here in the purport that at death, the gross body is finished, but the living entity is carried away by the subtle body to another gross body. So the principle of reincarnation. And uh, therefore devotees and, yeah, people and devotees, they have to be careful uh, what they're desiring. Because after all, it is all about desire. That's what carries one to their next uh, life. Next material body, that's... Oh, the, based on one's desire, um, their spiritual di desires, pure desires, and Krishna fulfilling those desires, one could go back to the spiritual world. So, like for example, people think, 
people think so many things, but think, okay, you know, they have straight hair, and they're, oh yeah, I wish I had curly hair, or yeah, I wish I was taller, I wish I was shorter, I wish I had blue eyes, I wish this, I wish, 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 wish. And uh, then they have those desires uh, within them, within their mind, within their subtle body, and it carries them to the next life. Okay, you have those desires, and see if you get those things. Um, so therefore, Rishabhadev and the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Rishabhadev, speaking to his 100 sons, he says that once you perform austerity, Tapo divyam, uh, was it nayam deho deha bhajam niloke kashchan karman arhate vid bhujame tapo divyam putra kayena sattvam shude brahma saukam twanantam. So he says there that, my dear sons, he said, you should not, um, you should not work hard like the hogs and dogs who eat all types of abominable things. Specifically, he says the stool eating hogs. But you should engage in what? Divine austerity. Tapo divyam. Tapo austerity and divine. Divine austerity. And what's the benefit of that? By engaging in an austerity, one can, Brahma Saukam Twanantam, we could experience unlimited happiness. So that's what he's um, saying we should do. Now, within the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, he describes uh, the different austerities we c we should perform uh, within our lives. One time when I was, when I joined the temple, yeah, years ago, I, I uh, was an initiate at the time, and I, I approached uh, Tirta Maharaj, and I was asking him, you know, for advice, what should I do? You know, what should I do? And he said, what you should do? He said, you should engage in austerity. <laughs> and then he said, Austerity, that's in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes it, the 17th chapter. So, so you should engage in austerity. So that's uh, described in seven, chapter 17, text 14. 17 is the division of, uh, divisions of faith. Yeah, one time also when I, when I first, I was, uh, was reading the Bhagavad Gita and then I was going through the Bhagavad Gita and uh, he said, <laughs> I went to him and said, yeah, I'm on the, the chapter three modes of material nature you know I'm on that chapter he said okay he said don't get stuck there <laughs> so don't get stuck in the modes of material nature so this is uh, 14 Dvi deva dvija guru pragya pujanam shaucham arjavam brahmacharyam ahimsa cha shariram tapa uchate so this is austerity of the body so Rishabhadeva is saying we should engage in austerity okay so austerity of the body is described here. What is what type of austerities do we need to engage in? The, the engage the body in. So austerity of the body consists of consists in worship of the supreme lord, the brahmins, the spiritual master, and superiors like the father and mother, and and in cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and nonviolence. So, uh, for example, offering respect, offering obeisances to this with our body. This is we do this regularly. Bhajan Ryan Swami was mentioning the other day about, I mean, earlier today about uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, and how Raghunath Das Goswami and many of the Goswamis they would offer a lot of obeisances <laughs> every day, like a thousand to Krishna, two thousand to the Vaishnav, something like that. So this is austerity of the body. Um, and also cleanliness. Like, I don't know, one devotee they were telling me how, uh, I don't know, it was some, you know, people have all types of strange philosophies, but saying how he was speaking with someone and the person was saying, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't see the value of really bathing so much, you know, or bathing regularly because... <laughs> You know what? What's the point? You know, you, you just get dirty. You, know, you just get you just get dirty again. So you know, why bother, right? <laughs> so cleanliness, uh, bathing regularly, right when one wakes up in the morning, um, for a good reason because <laughs> you know sleep by nature is uh, you know one's body becomes dirty, and also it also the bathing it cleanses the subtle body, like specifically the cold water. Uh, 
So cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and nonviolence. So these are certain uh, austerities of the body that we should engage in. Now there's austerities of the speech. Anu vegam kuram bakim satyam priya hitam chayat svadhyaya bayasam chayva van mayam tap uchite. Austerity of speech consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature. Now, of course, when it's saying here, because uh, sometimes you know, people say, okay, well, you should speak satyam priyam hitam chayat, you should speak. Uh, words that are pleasing, not agitating to others. So Prabhupada mentions here that when a teacher speaks, when he's instructing his uh, students, um, then there, the, then he could, uh, you could say, speak in a way that it may it may agitate. In other words, he may speak strongly to his students, as Dravida Prabhu was quoting that nice verse of the day. Tata duk sangam utsrija, that the sadhus by their sharp words cut the um, the the strong ropes of attachment within one's within one's mind. Uh, so so that's there. And by the way, there's a very um, wonderful purport of that in the in Adi Lila. There's a all very uh, series of wonderful verses and purports by Srila Prabhupada and Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami. And that's one of them, Tatadut Sangam Utsuja, this devotee's cutting the knots within the mind. Uh, so, yeah, that there's a purport there. Which I'm mentioning it because there's not a purport in the 11th canto. But there's a purport there. So, yeah, when, when, when a teacher is speaking, then yes, he has the right <laughs> to do that. Uh, but regularly reciting Vedic literature and, and, uh, and uh, saying here truthful, these are the austerities of speech. So then there's austerities of the mind. Mana prasada samyatpam manam atma vinigraha bhava sangshudir iti etat tapo manasam uchate. And satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purifications of one and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. So Prabhupada explains, okay, to make the mind austere means to detach it from sense gratification. So uh, <laughs> the mind has a tendency to dwell. That's the nature of the mind. It dwells on things. Especially they say, anyways, the, it dwells on things. Or you could say at least there's so many things, so many thoughts entering one's mind on a daily basis. When one's sleeping too, I mean, there's, the mind is active, dreaming. So to detach it from sense gratification, this is what it means to make it austere. And part of that is it should be so trained that it can be always thinking of doing good for others. So be trained, okay. Train the mind, okay. My mind should be thinking always how to do good for others. Uh, and to bring it away from thoughts of enj uh, material enjoyment and have it become satisfied, Srila Prabhupada makes a point here that uh, the best course is to divert the mind to Vedic literature, which is full of satisfying stories, as in the Puranas and Mahabharata. So we have our Krishna book, we have Srimad Bhagavatam, so many wonderful narration, so many wonderful pastimes of Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's so many wonderful pastimes, Prashuddha Prabhupada, I mean, so many wonderful books coming out, Chasing Rhinos, right, that the next one's hopefully coming out soon, My Spiritual Master Juhu books come out soon, so here's a way, t ways, just recently, Siddhanta Prabhu came out with another volume five of um, Memories, Prashuddha Prabhupada Disciples, of Srila Prabhupada. So, these are ways to absorb the mind and uh, satisfy it, purify it. Uh, and for brahmacharis, for those living in the ashram, 
they should uh, take full advantage of this. This is one of the main things Brahmacharya should be doing. Hari Nama Anukirtanam, Srila Prabhupada mentions in the Bhagavad Gita purport. Hari Nama Anukirtanam, so he said they should fully engage in hearing and chanting uh, about Krishna. And what is that? Well, what will that do? Well, that will produce, one with it should produce in one a desire to share Krishna consciousness with others. Just don't mind, but just like Bhakta, we have our Bhakta Glenn here. He told me he distributed, was it 42 books at Balboa Park? And I asked him, well, was that like 42 different people? And he's saying, yeah, practically it was 42 different people. That's great. Yeah, I think. Is it, is it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. $95, 42 different people. So this is good. This is great. This is wonderful. Um, this is a, a, a wonderful way to utilize one's time and glorifying Krishna. And uh, just like, and therefore Srila Prabhupada, he, 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 he um, first of all, he spent a lot of time writing the books, but he also emphasized uh, the distribution of books. And you know, sometimes people will say, well, I'm shy, or I'm not really a book, distribu book distributor, something like that. Well, then we would say, okay, well, you could sponsor some books. <laughs> um, sponsor some books means take the hard, some hard-earned wealth and uh, sponsor some books for, for distribution purposes. Maybe somebody doesn't have much money, you know, devotees go on book distribution and, you know, you meet some high schooler kid or something, you know, don't have much money, okay, here, take a book, something like that. Um, but, oh yeah, to, to we, you know, people could give to their friends, to their family. It's kind of cold. <laughs> you know, kind of, it's, am I nervous or am I cold? It's mostly cold. <laughs> uh, People could give to their family or to their friends. Like all of, I mean, of course, say the friends and family have to be, maybe be a little favorable because sometimes they won't accept, but provided family and friends will accept, we could give them books, we should give them books. Prabhupada said every gentleman and lady should have a Srimad Bhagavatam and, and, and uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita in their house. What to speak of those who are devotees, what to speak of those who are aspiring, to become initiated, everybody should have Chaitanya Charitamrita and, Bhag and uh, Shun Bhagavatam in their house. Uh, just like, for example, when we talk about spreading Krishna consciousness, there's, or God consciousness, or religion, uh, the Mormons are making a lot of prog progress, I've heard, at least in uh, attracting people and getting people as members, and also and also the, the Muslims are. Now, Muslims, you know how they're getting most of their members? <laughs> children. children, yes. Children, they're having a lot of children. I don't know how. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they're having a lot of children. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how many, five, some, who knows how many, but they're having a good number of children. And therefore, it's, ver it's expanding a lot. And the Mormons discussing with them one time I was discussing with them, and they're saying that uh, most because they go door to door and they're out preaching, they're they're quite organized. Uh, but largely, th they get a lot of their followers from th their members just talking with their friends and family, and saying, "Oh, come to the t come to the church," and they become attracted and they become members. That's what they said. It wasn't it wasn't going door to door. Was, of course, some are coming, but. So we have our uh, transcendental book distribution. Our mission is to flood the world with books. And uh, this is a wonderful way to um, attract people to Christian consciousness and to get them involved and to help them become devotees is to give them books. Because after all, we want to the the transcendental message to enter into their consciousness, and that we want it to 
to influence them. So, of course, we have our preaching. We may go to a house. We may go to a college. We may go here. We may go there and you know, give some talks, which is good. Prabhupada encouraged that. Uh, but one thing to consider in relation to that is that we may go to somebody's house, for example. We stay the weekend. <laughs> you know, we give some talks. You know, they invite their friends or family, or maybe a big program or something. Uh, but how long can we actually stay there? <laughs> and how long do they want us to stay there? But you know, they have a saying like, uh, three days is, you know, people start filming, okay, maybe this... <laughs> but, um, but Sri the Prabhupada's books, you put a book in somebody's house, and therefore it's called time bomb. You put a book there, and it just goes, tick, 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 and eventually time bomb means it's in a positive sense, means eventually the right person will get it and uh, they'll become a devotee. So, uh, with Srila Prabhupada's books, you put the books there in somebody's house and they stay there. How long do they stay there, provided people keep them in their house? They stay there 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on and on, year after year. Sometimes there's stories, I'm, t I'm sure Vijay Prabhu could tell us, of books sitting there for 20 years on somebody's shelf. And then, you know, the grandson, the grandson comes, how long? 30? 30. 30. The grandson comes by, you know, to grandma's house, sees the book, reads it, and he goes to the temple, and there's brahmachari, and maybe sannyasi guru later, you know. So, uh, the books, we shouldn't underestimate them. <coughs> and therefore, to try to give as much as possible is important. And then we have this marathon coming in December, uh, it's a perfect time to try to do that. And Srila Prabhupada said in relation to, because Prabhupada is a transcendental strategist, what is, it, what is it, is that the word? Yeah. Strategist, strategist. Transcendental strategist. He had so many strategies to um, spread Krishna consciousness. He's always thinking how to do it. And part of Prabhupada's plan was that through book distribution some of the funds would go to building of the temple in Mayapur, the TOVP Temple Vedic Planetarium which is going on now uh, so sometimes the devotees would say okay every book is a brick in the Mayapur temple so that's there too that we can look at it as that okay through book distribution people, the souls are coming to getting transcendental knowledge. Lakshmi is being liberated from the hands of Ravana, right? Or Sita, right? In Ramchandra's pastimes, we have Ravana, the great right, demonic personality who captured Sita, the goddess of fortune, the, the wife of, of Lord Ramchandra. So similarly, money is in the hands of all these people. We're like little Ravanas, but it shouldn't be there. <laughs> it should be given back to Krishna. So liberating Lakshmi in that way Giving transcendental knowledge to these souls, it's good for us, an austerity of mind and body and speech and all that. And um, every, book, every book is a brick. It's helping building this temple, actually, TVP temple, which is an amazing uh, temple. And Srila Prabhupada said that if you help build this temple, he said that Srila Bhaktino Thakur, one of our great acharyas, one of our great teachers, the father of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada's guru, he'll come personally and take you back to Godhead. <laughs> he said that. Um, so we should understand and support on whatever level we can book distribution and know that it gives Prabhupada the greatest ecstasy. Like it says, Prabhupada, he was on his bed in L.A. and other, other places, Vrindavan. And Prabhupada was rolling in ecstasy, hearing uh, the, the number of books going out in Lakshmi. He was, he was rolling in ecstasy. And also, this is also another thing. It's not that, oh, it's just some kind of mundane, oh, we announced how much money was, was collected. Prabhupada, he, he instituted that. He, uh, he, would, he told Tamal Krishna Goswami when he came back from Sangratan in Los Angeles, he would say, how many books and how much Lakshmi? He's a Prabhupada Institute, so it's not mundane, it's, it's transcendental. So Prabhupada was rolling in XC, hearing the scores, and 
devotees even have some cloth that Prabhupada, like a handkerchief that Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada was actually crying and hearing the scores and so on, so happy. So devotees actually have pieces of cloth where, you know, wipe Prabhupada's tears. So, um, so this is the proper utiliz utilization of time and of life that we try to help uh, people by spreading Krishna consciousness. And in this way we could free ourselves from this fearful situation that Pranjana is, you know, his whole life full of fear and anxiety and just unhappiness. And then also leading up to the end of his life, fear, anxiety, unhappiness. So we free ourselves from it, we free others from it. So it's a great opportunity. Okay, so does anybody have any, uh, I know it's Bugar, Bu Buga, Bu Bugarba Goswami and Kashishvara disappearance? I don't know, we could read maybe tomorrow or... Yeah, the book's there. I could also read today. I was meaning f to ask somebody to give me the book before we started the... Yes? Just one comment. that you read from mm -hmm. the Bhagavad Gita, it's not mentioned until the verse after the austerities that these are all... I mean, it may be obvious, but these are all austerities in the mode of goodness. Yes. Also austerities in the mode of passion and ignorance. So these are the ones that we should uh, focus on. Yes, these are austerities in the mode of goodness, and it describes austerities in the mode of passion, austerities in the mode of ignorance. Just like we have Hiranyakashipu, one of the greatest, or <laughs> one of the worst <laughs> demons to gra to to to. I would say to grace the planet, to, to, to be on the planet. Thank you. Um, so he was performing great austerity. You know what he was doing? He was standing on his tiptoes and he performed so much austerity <laughs> with his. He had his arm raised up, but it wasn't like in Sankirtan. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a Harinam Sankirtan. He had his arms raised up performing these austerities so he could try to become immortal. Um, so we have to perform austerities for the pleasure of Krishna, for advancement of Krishna consciousness. Alright, so now we will read Bhugarbha Goswami, Sri Bhugarbha Goswami. Short. Okay. A disciple of Sri Gadadhar Pandit, Sri Bhugarbha Goswami shared an intimate friendship with Sri Lokanath Goswami. Inspired by Lord Chaitanya, they were the first and most senior devotees to settle in Vrindavan. Before the arrival of Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatana Goswamis, they tried to uncover the lost holy places of Radha Govindaji. Unlike the aggressive approach of modern scientists to discover the unknown, Bhugarbha and Lokanath Goswamis found Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna's pastime forest by the humble method of surrender. They simply wandered around Vrindavan, calling out the names of her twelve forests, Bandiravan, Kamyavan, Mahavan, Talavan. And Srimati Vrindadevi, the maintainer of the forest and an expansion of Krishna's pastime potency, revealed the exact location of each and every forest. It is told that to avoid material distractions, Bhugarbha would perform his bhajan, you know where? Yeah. Underground. <laughs> so he received the name Bhugarbha. Bu means earth, garba means cave, womb, hidden place. So the, uh, that's, I think it's by, what's that temple? Is it Radha Damodar? But, but, but the cave, isn't it the cave? It's you know. a different cave, that's what Oh, okay, it's a different cave, okay. Okay, <laughs> Dwight said different caves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, some caves. Okay, so he is Prem Manjari or Badra Rekhika Reik, and Radha Gopanas Nitya Nukunjalila. Okay. His samadhi is stands near Rupa Goswami's in the Radha Damodar temple courtyard. Okay, now we'll read Kashish for a pundit. Okay. Sri Ishwar Puri sent his disciples, Govinda and Kashishwar Pandit, 
to Jagannath Puri to humbly serve Lord Chaitanya. Reluctant to accept service from his godbrothers, Sri Chaitanya finally agreed since it was his guru's wish. Named Kalavati and Sashi Reka and Vrajlila, Govinda and Kashishwar bring Yamuna water to Lord Sri Krishna. Kashishwar Pandit, who was strong and powerfully built, used to walk before Lord Chaitanya, keeping the crowds from touching him. And after kirtans, he would serve prasadam to all the devotees. Sri Gorsundar asked Kashishwar to move to Vrindavan for worshipping Sri Rupa Goswami's deity of Govindaji. Fearing separation from Lord Chaitanya, Kashishwar said, My Lord, if I must give up your association, my heart will split in two. Out of compassion for his devotee, Lord Gaur Chantra gave him a deity of himself that was so perfectly formed it exactly resembled the Lord. And the deity's name was Gaur Govinda. Self-manifest. Gaur Govinda, the deity's name, is a golden form of Krishna playing flute. Then Kashishwar Pandit happily went to Vrindavan to see Gaur Govinda Excuse me. Went to went to Vrindavan to serve Gaur Govinda and Govindaji. Sri Sarana Deepika says, "I worship Sri Kashishwar Pandit, whose whose power of love and devotion brought Sri Chaitanya to Western India as a deity. Today, the original deities of Gaur Govinda and Govindaji are lovingly adored by thousands of devotees in Jaipur, Rajasthan. Kashishwar Pandit's original samadhi is in the 64 samadhis area." Shri Bhugarbha Goswami Ki Jai Shri Kashishwar Pandit Ki Jai Does anybody have any last comments or questions? Yes. Bhugarbha This one desire tree uh, included one other little tidbit on that Past time, his heart was going to break if he had to go to Vrindavan and leave Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. So Lord Chaitanya manifests the deity, and, and uh, then he allowed Kashishwar to serve him and the deity lunch, mm -hmm. and they both took lunch prepared by Kashishwar. And this way, he appreciated the non-difference of the deities, and therefore he could leave Gorang and, and Jagannath Puri and take his deity with him to Vrindavan and. I, I think you said installed him by uh, Radha Govinda there, by Govinda. Yeah, nice. Gorang Govinda? Yeah. Gorgopal. So, go, no, Gor Govinda. Yeah, Gor Govinda. All right. Gantra Shema Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.